Hello and welcome to the Truth Seekers Podcast. A truth seeker is someone who wants to know the truth. They search for what's true and they won't rest until they find it. I am a truth seeker and if you are too, then you've come to the right place where we will search for truth each week in the stories of the Bible. Well, hello and welcome back to the Truth Seekers Podcast. Before we begin today's lesson, I'd like to ask you a question. Who do you say Jesus is? If someone were to walk up to you today and ask you, who is Jesus? What would you say? Or if Jesus himself were to ask you, who do you say I am? What would you say? Well, Jesus did ask that question and he asked it of his disciples. If you'd like to hear what Peter answered, then listen closely. What Peter had to say about Jesus was one of the most important revelations he ever had. Are you ready for today's story? Let's begin. Jesus and his disciples came to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. Jesus took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. Now Jesus did something different with this man than he had done with anyone before. Jesus spit on the man's eyes. That's right. Jesus spit on his eyes. When he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, Do you see anything? The blind man looked up and said, I see people, but they look like trees walking around. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were opened, his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Jesus sent him home, saying, Don't even go into the village. Jesus and his disciples then went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked them a question. Jesus asked, Who do people say I am? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? The disciples thought for a moment. Why was Jesus asking them this question? Did he care what other people thought? Why was he wanting to know who they thought he was? Wasn't he Joseph and Mary's son, born in a stable in Bethlehem, a carpenter's son raised in Nazareth? But then, in a moment of revelation, Peter realized the truth. Peter's eyes were opened and he understood that Jesus was not just any man. Peter answered, you are the Messiah. True seekers, do you remember what the word Messiah means? Messiah means anointed one. In the Old Testament days, only kings were anointed with oil when they were placed upon the throne to rule. The prophets had begun to speak of an anointed one, a future king who would come to save them from their enemies. The Israelites had been looking for a Messiah to come and rescue them for hundreds and hundreds of years. And here in this moment, Peter declared that Jesus was the one the prophets had foretold. Here he was walking with them, the Messiah. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him for it was not time. Jesus then began to talk to the disciples about something new, something he had not talked to them about before. It startled them. It surprised them. Jesus began to teach them that he must suffer many things, that he must be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, that he must be killed and after three days rise again. The disciples were confused. They couldn't understand why was Jesus saying these things. He spoke plainly about it, but Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. Peter could not understand. Surely this wasn't right. Jesus, no, you won't die. Jesus, you're not going to be killed. Just as quickly as Peter had said that Jesus was the Messiah, he then began to doubt Jesus and doubt what Jesus was saying. Surely he would not die. No, the Messiah was supposed to come and deliver them from their enemies, not be killed by them. How could the Messiah die? And what did he mean that he would be raised again in three days? What was Jesus talking about? This was too confusing for the disciples, especially Peter. So Peter began to tell Jesus that he was wrong. But who is Peter to tell Jesus that he is wrong? Who is anyone to tell Jesus that he is wrong? 
So Jesus turned and looked at his disciples and he rebuked Peter. He said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. And Jesus said this because Peter did not fully understand that even though Jesus was the Messiah, he had come to save them in a way that Peter could not understand yet. They did not know yet that Jesus had come, yes, as the Messiah to save, but not in the way that they thought. Jesus had come to save by giving up his life, by laying it down through death. But not only would he die, he would rise again and overcome death and the enemy and sin. This is the kind of salvation that Jesus had come to bring. This is how Jesus would conquer the true enemy. Then Jesus called the crowd to him along with his disciples and began to say even more surprising things. He said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet lose their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. Dear True Seekers, what did we learn in today's lesson? In today's lesson, we see Jesus begin to unveil his plan to his disciples. You see, Jesus came into the world to give his life so that we might have the chance to receive salvation. John 3.16 states, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him will not die, but have everlasting life. Jesus came to earth at God's command. He was obeying the will of his heavenly Father. It was the Father's will to make a way so that all who have been condemned by sin might be offered the chance at eternal life. The Bible says that the punishment for sin is death, and we all have sinned, all of us. But God, in his great love for us, sent his son Jesus to die in our place so that we would not have to. Jesus took the punishment that we should have been given, and those who believe or put their faith in Jesus will receive forgiveness of sins. Now that our sins have been forgiven, we receive new life, eternal life, and relationship with God. God no longer sees our sins, but he sees the blood of Jesus over us. We receive Jesus' righteousness. We receive his strength, his perfection. In exchange for our sin, he gives us his holiness when we put our faith in him. The question that Jesus asked his disciples is the same question he asks of you and me. Who do you say I am? Do you say Jesus was just a good man who lived a long time ago? If that were true, then Jesus would have no power to save us. He would have stayed dead in the grave. But if you answer that he is the Messiah come to save, then you believe that he is God and he has power to save. And not only did he die, but he rose again and conquered sin in the grave. You see, Jesus calls all of us to follow him. Once we put our faith in him, that's only the beginning. After that, he calls all of us to be his disciples. A disciple is someone who learns from a teacher. A disciple is someone who follows their teacher. Jesus calls us to follow him, and as we follow him, he calls us to lay down our lives. What does that mean, to lay down our lives, to pick up our cross and follow him? It means we surrender our lives to him. It means it's not about what I want or getting my own way. But it's about obeying Jesus and doing what he commands me to do. When I give my life to Jesus, when I obey him, when I follow him, I receive everything that he has for me. In return, he gives me the strength to follow him. He gives me courage and hope and peace and joy and all the things I've been looking for. But I find them when I surrender, when I give up my life for him. When I give up my life and my rights and my selfishness to have things my way, I find true peace and true joy. Have you surrendered your whole life to Jesus? I promise you, you won't regret it. He is a good God and he loves you. He will give you his peace and his forgiveness and his strength as you put your faith in him. 
as you trust in him and surrender your whole life to him. If you'd like to read today's story in your Bible, you can find it in Mark chapter 8. Let me pray with you before we go. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. I accept your forgiveness, Jesus. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins. Thank you for washing me clean as white as snow. Thank you for giving me your holiness and your righteousness so I can now live for you. I choose to pick up my cross and follow you every day. I choose to surrender my life and obey you, Jesus. I know it won't always be easy, but it will be worth it. Help me to trust you completely with my whole life. I know your way is better than my way, and I know life with you is a million times better than life without you. Thank you for being so good. Thank you for being our Messiah. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, it's that time. Before we go, I have a few reviews I'd like to read. Uh, This message came in from David. He says, Dear Sherilyn, thank you for doing the Truth Seekers podcast. It is a cool podcast. The podcast is a blessing to me. That is from David, age seven. Thank you, David. I'm so glad you love it. All right. This message says, Hi, Sherilyn. My name is Amelia, and I'm nine years old from the UK. Your podcast has really helped me to find God. I've been listening to you for a few months. It is easy to understand. I listen every night and it's so fun that I can't pick a favorite. Keep going. Thank you, Amelia. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to hear that the podcast has helped you to find God. And I pray that you will continue to draw closer and closer and closer to him. This is a letter that came in a little while ago. It's from my friend, Anna Sophia. She's reached out to me before, and this was a letter that she wrote me, a handwritten letter. So I want to read it. It says, hola, that is hello in Spanish. My name is Anna Sophia. I am 11 years old and live in Honduras. I love to listen to your podcast in the car. When I grow up, I want to make a podcast to teach people of God's love. Thank you for spreading God's word. I love to hear that you want to start a podcast when you grow up so that you can also teach people of God's love. If all of you guys out there start your own podcast that share the love of Jesus and tell other people about Jesus and God's love, we're going to reach so many people for Jesus. That would be so exciting. All right, this review says, Hi, my name is Ella and I'm nine years old. My family and I listen to your podcast in the mornings during breakfast with my bunny, Oliver. I love this podcast so much, I would give it a million stars if I could. Well, thank you for listening to the podcast and I'm glad that Oliver is a part of that too. Thank you so much. All right, this review says, I am so thankful to have stumbled across your podcast. When I was pregnant with my fourth baby, I was really struggling to find wholesome biblical content for my older three. I am so grateful to you for not watering the word down for children, as I firmly believe they should experience the word as God gave it to us. It helps us in the morning by starting our day with Bible time. I have recommended it to multiple friends and family members as well. My seven-year-old Eleanor says, I love True Seekers. My favorite stories are Esther and the Kings of Israel. I would give you a hundred stars. Five-year-old James says, I like True Seekers. I really like the Hebrew alphabet praying the Bible series. I liked hearing the verses and learning the letters. Three-year-old Matilda constantly asks for toothsetas throughout the day and has surprised me immensely with how much she is retaining. What a joyful thing to see the word blossoming in young hearts. Oren is eight months, and I am so glad to have something wholesome and true for him to experience throughout infancy with his siblings. Thank you so much for the ministry you you are doing for the young hearts throughout the world, the Macklin family. Thank you so much, Macklin family, for that um, just precious review. Thank you, Esther, and thank you, Matilda. Thank you, James, and thank you, little Oren, for listening. And I just continue to pray God's word and God's truth. Continue just to be planted deep within your heart. So thank you so much. What a blessing um, to receive that review. All right, well, that was a perfect note to end on. Thank you so much for continuing to support the podcast, for continuing to be here. You can also support the podcast over on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Sherilyn R. Grant. Thank you so much for listening, and I look forward to our time together next week.